So, very welcome everybody to the third and last part of opening a new front. This is a very nice game where we have with the white pieces Grandmaster Yevgeny Nayer and playing black is Samu Senko. So, um, for one reason I have the white pawn. Okay, I'll revoke your pawn uh, L008. So, I'll start with this one. I wanted to show you this kind of thinking of opening a new front also in a middle game perspective or a late middle game, early end game, you could say. Oh, new people are joining. Okay. Um, so at this point, I will just quiz you for a little variation here. Let's see if you can figure out how Grandmaster Nayer continued in this, uh, in this position. All right. Uh, I'll give you for this little mission one minute, 30 seconds. All right. Why to play and get some advantage here, okay? Why to play and get some... Oh, and increase their advantage, we should rather say. Increase their advantage. All right. Royal XB, you got it. You're the first winner here today. Great work. I get the point, Guinea Pig and Adi Chess. Uh, that's uh, completely coherent with our topic. <laughs> L008 also. Yeah, I like your idea. Um, it's probably not bad. Uh huh. Uh, but I think uh, what uh, Royale, Chess, Rayo, and Subham are proposing, I think it's even stronger. And that's what uh, Nayer played in the game. Then we have some other ideas. Oh, we have Rook sacrifices coming up here also. That's a flashy move. We'll have to look into that. Aha, queen, yeah, and the, increasing the pressure at the d7 pawn, some people are saying. Wow, e6, that's a brilliant move, I guess. What happens if I take? Well, we will have a look at that. And uh, Robo, you were very close, uh, Robo. Uh, great work, aha, by Robo also. Um, so, let's uh, first uh, check the sideline, so to speak. Some people are saying here a4, which makes a lot of sense uh, to open up a new front. Um, I understand what you mean. Uh, if I now take, you'll take back and you're attacking the pawn on d7 with more strength. However, I guess that what I would play here is b simply bishop c6. This is my next move anyway, right? Uh, I definitely have to play bishop c6. White already has a, fir a first front. We should have that clear from the very beginning. That's black's main weakness, right? The pawn on d7. So black is probably going to play bishop c6. They're going to reroute this rook to e8. That's what I think is what black should try to do here um, in order to improve their position in, in, to some extent. So if a4, I guess bishop c6. And um, yeah, I think that's uh, okay for black. I mean, after all, my bishop is protecting these two pawns now. I know you could play something like a5, like uh, last uh, time's uh, session we were speaking about fixing weaknesses and so on. But uh, actually, I think there are more prospects on the opposite flank. So that's what some people are saying. But okay, we can look very quickly at the other options here. e6, some people are saying, if you play a move like this, letting me get rid of my weakness, then you should have really strong arguments. So okay, I'll take. And uh, what was your idea here? Uh, anyone who, who would like to show me their variation here? Uh, my tactics are not 100% at this time of the day. Rook d8. Oh, wow, is that really possible? I'll take it. I don't follow. Those who said e6, speak up. Let us know what you had in mind. To me, it looks like a little present. If you play like this, you're giving black a present here. You give them a pawn and also closing an old front. Yeah, good uh, way to express it, uh, Robo. You're right. So. Save this one for later, okay? Save this move for later. It can be a very strong move, but probably not right now. Yeah, queen f5, some people are saying. I guess I'll play bishop c6 then. Perhaps you were trying to attack me on this side. I will have to play g6. Looks very ugly, but I guess that's what there is, right? I don't have so much else to do. Um, so, yeah, queen f5, it's a possible move, I think. It's not a bad idea. And, and then there are some other... Uh, rook f6, somebody was saying also a crazy move. Rook f6 uh, in the first place. Are you mating here? Uh, else, uh, again, it's like a present, no? The first thing I would check, of course, is if I can take and just play queen d8. If you tell me that you're mating me here, 
good for you, but uh, I can't. Oh, you can actually, right? Oh, you're mating me somehow. Are you? No, I don't think so. Uh, anyone with a sharp tactical eye, let me know what is this, uh, what's going on here. White is not mating because this square is not available. What, what do you mean, Rayo? Can't I just take it or? Now we're speaking tactics. What? I don't follow. It looks lost for white. Yeah, I think so too. Queen e4 instead of queen d8. Oh, oh, bravo, bravo. I didn't see that one coming. Of course, very good technique. Forcing queens and winning the game, I guess. So rook f6, it's too, um, too flashy. No, that's wrong lesson. <laughs> we're speaking strategy today, right? Opening a new front. So, too creative, yeah. Uh, let's uh, listen to... Uh, who was the fastest one? It was Royale. So, Royale. Uh, please go ahead, Royale, and uh, share with us uh, what you have uh, noticed here. H4, all right. That's a very nice move. It's like uh, gaining space, but at the same time, we're trying to see if we could create like a new front on the king side, try to attack them on the king side. After all, they don't have so many pieces at uh, defending their king side, right? So that's what uh, Nayer played in the game. You can see clearly here at Royale that if I play a move like h5, it's very weakening, no? Uh, you can already start to look at sacrifices and so on. Uh, or you could perhaps attack this pawn in some way. Uh, Tal would never play it, you're saying in the chat? I think for Mikhail Tal, this would also be a very natural move, h4, um, in my opinion. I mean, anyway, in this case, maybe you can play something like rook d3, bring the rook. One nice thing about h4 is also that you can forget about any tactical pitfalls with check on c1. You always have a flight square for the king. Alpha 0, rook h6. Yeah, I mean, that's what, what was my idea, Ryo. I was just thinking that maybe I should move this uh, rook first, but uh, okay. Oh, you mean rook h6 wins uh, straight away? Maybe you're right, yeah. I mean, we have a draw in the pocket, but I guess we can even play for a win here, right? Aha! I guess so, I guess you're right. Yeah, unless uh, somebody can prove the opposite. That seems like you're, you're winning. I don't know, could I take this pawn and sack the queen? Or that's not enough? Oh, just rook g g3 anyway. Uh, go back. Okay, what did I blunder? Uh, I, I went I back. Think the, no, I think the... Rook d3 first is unnecessary. Oh, it's unnecessary. Oh, yeah, queen, just queen oh you just pick up the pawn. I understand. You pick up the pawn, you mean? Right, like that? Yeah, and nothing's hanging. Nothing's hanging, yeah. Yeah, and now... And now you just play rook d3. This check is rendered harmless because I can just play king h2. And exactly. I don't have... There is no chance of saving this with black, I guess. Aha. Uh -huh. I mean, I don't have something like this, do I? Could I use the bishop in that way? Or is this too clever? Maybe this went too far, don't you think? Something went wrong on the way? Yeah, so let's not uh, yeah, have yeah. use of, of tactics here. I mean, the idea is great, but if we have such a big advantage, why do we have to venture on sacrifices if we can play something like rook d3 first? In my opinion. Oh, rook d4 says Sabham. Yeah, maybe you're right then. Okay, okay, I, I see what you mean. So you prevent bishop e4 then. I guess you're right. Yeah, uh, fair enough. You can just play rook h6. And you can, yeah, I understand Subham's variation, something like this, and then bring in the rook. And now rook g4. Yeah, agreed, uh, I guess. Unless I can play rook g8 here, can I? Oh, you, you, you're giving check on h6 then. Oh, I see, I see. Nice, nice. So it seems to me that you're winning in every variation. All right. So uh, h5, it's hard for a human to play. Uh, hard to play h5. And he didn't play it in the game, uh, Samusenko. He simply played here the move. Bishop c6. Aha. Uh -huh. And uh, okay, Royale, are you still there? How is your plan? Exactly, h5. So basically, we're trying to push h6, which would soften up Black's uh, dark squares. Uh, they cannot play h6. Uh, that's what I quizzed you on. And uh, yeah, time is right for sacrifice. It's basically like the other variation, but it's it's even, even stronger, I guess, now. Because uh, yeah, we have some extra tempo, I think. Something like that. So, what do you think? Uh, uh, what's the name? Royale. Yeah, rook d4. Chess Rayo says rook d4, l008. That's right. So, uh, rook g4 coming up and uh, yeah, it's over. So in the game, they didn't uh, play like that after h5. Okay, thanks, uh, Royale. Excellent work. They didn't play in the game. Anything wrong with rook d3? No, I don't think so. But the, yeah, there was some tactical uh, small 
uh, difference was there. Um, I mean, if it's really important, we can look at it, of course. Um, there was some small difference. I could take on e5. Oh, sorry. I could take on d5 and uh, take on e5 and take on g3, don't you think? Yeah. So why we, we try to play precise chess, right? So root d4 is better. Anyway, I have more examples. This is not my only example today. So let's uh, speed up a little. In the game, they played, uh, like we were saying here, bishop c6, strengthening the, the pawn. Yeah, uh, please, uh, let's focus on chess in the chat, okay? Let's uh, skip other subjects. You can have your own chessable lesson later on and, and chat about whatever you want. Let's stick to the subject here. So, rook e8 was played in the game. They're attacking this pawn. And here there are different good moves for white. Um, the only thing you shouldn't play here is h6, <laughs> just for the record. This looks very impressive, but actually black can defend here. Believe it or not, you can just play a simple move like rook cc8 and black is defending everything. Um, I didn't think this when I checked this in the first place, but uh, yeah, I think Stockfish told me that black can actually survive here. And uh, Nayer also noticed and he played in a completely different way. So, uh, question for all of you. If queen takes e5 is coming up, which do you think would be the smartest move with white? All right, I'll quiz you on this one. Only that move, 30 seconds. Smartest move if queen takes e5 is coming up. You're right, Hong Pao, that's it. He didn't play that in the game though, but uh, I think it's the best move. So good work by Hong Pao. Only Hong Pao understood this so far. Wow. Nobody else? And nobody plays like a Grandmaster Nayer in the game. Okay, Crash 61, you got it also. Aha. And still we have people who want to play e6. Careful with that move e6. Remember what we were saying. We are uh, un... How would this be? Closing our, our front instead of opening or something like that. All right, uh, Hong Pao, please go ahead. What would you play here? Exactly. That's what I call smart defense. Because if they take, as we can see here, there is a back rank mate. And of course, Hong Pao noticed that Queen A1 is not working here. Right, that's it. Nice. Uh, if you said something else, probably if you played Rook E1, well, if you play Rook E1, you have to consider uh, Queen takes D6. I don't know if that's, is that really what you want? Or, or is this winning also? Well, if you're saying it's winning, maybe you're right. Yeah, yeah, maybe you can play H6 and so on. But... Uh, I like uh, this defense much better, rook d3. That is a smart move, because also we are mobilizing the rook to the attack. Um, what else? e6, some people said. Um, I still don't understand this move if I, if I just take. What, what's the benefit here? Yeah. Um, so I think we can agree on that, right? Nobody played like, uh, like the Grandmaster. The Grandmaster played in the game rook 63. But uh, yeah, at this uh, time of the game, it's already clear that black is in huge trouble. They played rook, cc8, black, white played rook, e3. Now you can see that thanks to this move, h4, h5, we're very, very close to playing h6, which would even yield us good end games here. So it's not only about attacking, it's also about fixing like a favorable pawn structure, fixing those black pawns on the square of their bishop, so to speak. So yeah, white is on a really good track here. Uh, black played f6 and here we had an interesting moment because in the game white went for this very technical move rook d1 and they got a big advantage here uh, anyone what would we play with white here just to see if we are on the same page what should white play here right you're right uh, chess ryo l00 medina tiger of course he played h6 and d5 queen d4 this was a horrible end game for black and uh, they fought on very well. I think this game passed over 100 moves, but okay, black was always in trouble. However, there was a clear path to, to victory here. There was a better way to play. Um, well, I don't know. Would you like to try it? We can, we, can like to, we can try to see if we can find the winning path here. Yeah, this is more difficult. So I'll quiz it on this time. Uh, my hint to you is that you have an open mind, open mind, okay? Very surprising solution for white to get the winning endgame here, all right? 
Yeah, if black won, I think Nair would stop playing chess. Yeah, of course, white won in the end, but uh, black uh, defended really well. Um, the game would not have lasted that long if you had played in a different way here. But it's uh, slightly anti intuitive, the solution here for white. Aha, uh -huh. I understand that move. Uh, Adi Chess, Subham, Smiling Floor, Medina Tiger. I understand your move. I'll probably... Well, what would I play against that? Can I take? I guess I'll take then. Yeah, I'll take and I, I'll play Rook D8 and I hope the gods are with me. Um, but okay, you, you get half a point for that move. It's not bad. Oh, Queen C7, HDI Chess. You're trying to mate me on the last rank, but okay, I can maybe play something like Queen F8, right? I'm not mated there. Oh, so this was very difficult. Yeah, I understand. Oh, little Grandmaster, you were very close. Doesn't Only your last move. Sorry? I have, a, I have a question. Does my second move work? Does my second move work? Um, I'm a, yeah, I'm a yeah. Well, why? what happened? Let me think. What's the difference? I don't follow. Um, I, I will have to, t yeah, like, give me a moment, uh, Ryu. Give me a moment. What? Uh, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. It's the problem with, uh, you know, I told you, there is only one sequence which will work. I think Chess Ryu, Hong Pao, and Titan Chess, uh, you got it right. It's just that uh, Chessable won't uh, accept that uh, sequence because I programmed it to, to use the other sequence. Something like that. There are no multiple correct choices. Okay, Ryu, you're on. Let us know how to continue here. Okay, so we're gonna take on f6. Right. Okay, he obviously has to take back. So I play queen f6, but okay. R right, right. On e8. Please, please go ahead. Or yeah, yeah, that's that's the my variation. Okay, and but now, it's the same thing. Uh huh. Now we want h6, but because uh, here he has king g7. Right, right. I'm very happy to bring in the king, definitely. And the h6 takes, and the king g7 white's much better. But right. I mean, I'm, that's a fantastic trade if I can trade this pawn for that pawn, right? So, so that's the key move. Uh huh. So, what do you think about this, uh, Ryan? It's winning because uh, he, he can't even activate his piece without fear of rook d6, and then we put bishop d5. Even. Exactly. My only try would be to play something like rook um, e4 or rook e5. Let's say rook e4. Would it? Would that be my move? Rook e5. I calculated in the rook d6. Rook f5. Bishop e6. Oh, really? Nice. Rook e5, rook d6, rook e5, bishop e6. Very pretty move. Aha. Uh -huh. I see what you mean. But are you 100% sure if I play rook f4 and you take and... I mean... Or I'm dead lost here. Well, I guess you play rook t 7 right? Yeah. Yeah, that should be very difficult for me. Aha. Uh -huh. um, right. Isn't black getting mated on the back rank? When are they getting mated? I mean, sometimes. Yeah, Titan chess. Uh, but okay, I'll, I'll go one square further. My plan is to play something like this. Let's see if Ryo allows that. F3. You just play F3, right? If I go for the pawn, then? Aren't you giving me oh, more? I, 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 oh, very beautiful, Ryo. Very beautiful. That's true beauty in chess, right? To give mate on, on G8. Uh -huh. I didn't see that one coming, honestly. Right. So maybe I'm, I'm just lost here in every variation, right? D5, says Eric, D5. But then I guess there will be motives against this bishop. I don't think you can survive here. What do you say, Ryu? I don't know. Rookie 6? And then at least I yeah, Rookie 6 should, should be winning, right? Uh-huh. So, yeah. This I'm is too much. Yes, Rookie 6. Yeah, right. So, so what do you think, Ryo? Surprising that the Grandmaster didn't play like this? Or, or not so surprising? What do you think? Uh, surprising for <laughs> <laughs> Everything is easy when, once you see the solution. What I think is that he thought that I shouldn't swap queens here because I have uh, attacking chances. And that's the last trade that I would like to uh, carry out, he, he thought, maybe. But uh, yeah, actually, that's the, that's the solution, like, like you're saying. So yeah, you can take in any order. But the right move here, of course, like you're saying, is h6. So I hope this is clear to everybody, despite the fact that we simplified, which sometimes means uh, better chances for the defender. Black is lost here because they cannot uh, untangle, really. Um, so thanks to Harry Dagepaw, no? that's uh, the idea from the very beginning to create a new front. We didn't uh, never ever manage to profit from this weakness.
but we created something new in the position. And just like Ryu is showing here, there are ideas like rook d6, or maybe you can also... I think there is another nice plan of bringing the rook to g7 also. It's an interesting plan. Uh, and I mean, look at Black's uh, chances. They have nothing to do here. Really. So, I mean, you can also slowly start improving your pieces. So yeah, summing up, that's what this example is about. Once you have an advantage and you cannot really profit from from the opponent's weakness, so to speak, you try to create some new front in the position. And that's what Nayer did. Also, I would say like a general rule, if you can play h4 and they cannot reply h5 for some tactical reason, then usually you're on the right track. So it's almost never in vain to, to throw in a move like uh, h4. Okay, I thought about showing you uh, another bishop's endgame, uh, which, I, which was played recently in the World Cup. Let's see if you saw this game. Uh, very, very nice uh, bishop's endgame. We saw in the first uh, class, we saw a case of a bishop's endgame. We saw this game, um, Pepe Cuenca. Uh, ah, we also saw Firuza versus Howell. No, we didn't. That's another tournament, I think. You're speaking about uh, the tournament in Letonia. In Latvia, sorry, uh, tactical magician. No, I'm speaking about the tournament which, which was played earlier this year in the month of July, if I'm not mistaken. And in that tournament, we had... Uh, yeah, I mean, th those games were great. I know which, which game you mean, of course. Ferusa versus Howell. Yeah, that's a great game. But I was thinking of, of this uh, tournament, the World Cup. So here we have, with the white pieces, Nihal and playing Blackies and Reikin. I don't know if you saw this endgame, but uh, it's really interesting. So I'll quiz you on the first uh, few moves here. You're playing with the black pieces. As you can see, black is probably better in this endgame. Everything... Uh, looks very promising for them. They have managed to fix. This is, of course, fantastic in the bishops' end. You know, any end game to have fixed uh, weaknesses like that. You have a lot of space. White's position is horrible, but okay, it's not as easy as it seems because, after all, this is a pass pawn. Only white has a pass pawn here, right? So it's it's a tricky end game. I can say that from the very beginning. It's a tricky end game, but Andrekin managed to win this end game in very nice fashion. So I would like you to follow in his footsteps. So here I'll quiz you for. Well, I'll just quiz you for the first two moves, yeah? To go slowly by slowly. So let's do this in 1 minute 20, okay? You're playing with the black pieces. Just tell me how you would start your, your business here in this position. Uh -huh. Yeah, don't play bishop a4. That's a very nice uh, motive, but it's uh, not working really at this point. Okay, Titan chess, you got it. Now you can use this uh, spare minute to think about what will happen next. <laughs> Bad news, uh, Royale. I'll make a draw if you play like that, I think. We'll, well, we'll see. So most people got this one right. Added chess, little grandmaster. Um, yeah, there is a group of players who, who I will soon offer a draw against. Those are Medina Tiger, Subham, Eric, F, Crush61, and JM Chess2010. Uh, we're heading for a draw there. You can think about that. How is that draw about to happen? Okay. Smiling floor. I understand. Uh, I understand your move. Interesting move by Royale and Hong Pao. Aha. Uh -huh. Wow. HDI chess. That, that was a mouse slip, I guess. Uh, or did you really intend to sacrifice the pawn like that? I don't think so. It must have been a mouse slip. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah. Careful with that mouse. All right, so let's uh, listen to Titan Chess. All right, uh, Titan Chess, how do you continue here? F5, very nice. I mean, we should notice, of course, that we have a pawn majority for white on the queen side, sorry, and a pawn majority for black on the king side. So it's natural to try to do something on the king side here, of course. F5 is what Andrekin played in the game, uh, white took, and so far, you would say, why did, what did we achieve from here? But uh, don't worry, don't worry. This is already uh, making good progress. Before we continue with the, with the game, yeah, thanks, uh, Titan Chess. Let's have a look at what some people are saying here. Yeah, you, you're right, Titan Chess. There is a motive with F4 and so that the king can enter. But I wanted to ask you also, why, what's wrong with E5? I, I mean, I want to ask everybody. Uh, What's wrong with e5? But I'll quiz this instead on you. So I'll, I'll quiz this on you. Let's see uh, who is the smartest one here. How do you continue with white here? 
why to play and save themselves. That's right, Titan Chess and L008. Don't do that, little Grandmaster and Subham. You let my king in. Uh, that's going to be very dangerous for you. Oh, everybody. I, I don't even, even have the time to name everybody who found this. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah, it was not difficult. Okay, so congratulations to everybody who found this. Uh, a lot of people found this little trick. I think I can just cancel the, the quiz right now. So, uh, L008, how do you continue with white here? Aha, right, perpetual. Yeah, exactly. So it's not a perpetual check, but it's like a perpetual sequence of moves. Because black, unfortunately, they cannot avoid the swap of bishops. And if that takes place, as you can see, uh, this protected past pawn will uh, make a draw here for white. Yeah, black cannot progress here. So it's going to be a draw. Right. Uh, that's why we shouldn't play the move... Um, e5 here. No matter its natural looks, it's not a good idea. Why can force a draw? And actually, even if I don't play, if I just play something else, like bishop d3, despite the fact that I have all my pawns on the, the wrong color, I think I can still save this, because it's not easy for black to create a pass pawn either. Right? So, okay. Let's go back to the right solution here. f5, we are slowly uh, approaching the idea of creating a passed pawn on our flank, so to speak, on the queen side, or the king side, I mean. But at the same time, we keep this idea in mind to enter with the king. All right. So f5 was played in the game. Uh, g takes. After e takes f5, uh, please notice here that uh, if you play something like king f4, what you, would you play with the black pieces, anyone? Exactly, guinea pig. King d4, this is very dangerous for white because... Yeah, as you can see, the king will approach the pawn if bishop takes. You don't have any reason to swap those bishops, I think. What would you play here with black? Anyone? Bishop a4? Really? Is, is that working? Maybe you're right. But what if I... What if I take and I go back with the bishop? Do I lose here? Well, this was a bit confusing, I must say. Uh, okay, if, if you continue that conversation, I'll just uh, make the chat private. Uh, too much distraction in the chat. All right, I'll run with the pawn then. I'll run with the pawn. What, what is going on here? Are, are you really queening before I am? I don't think so, no. Okay, but I think I'm... I'm not losing here, am I? Well, I don't know what's going on. I guess this is what you want to play. Uh-huh. Interesting. If somebody's winning, it's black, right? Yeah, maybe it's black who's winning. So I, I see what you mean. This pawn is very dangerous and so on. But okay, maybe I can give some checks. I don't know. Doesn't seem that simple, no? Uh, is it simple? Yeah, but there is. I don't think it's simple because you cannot use the queen to interfere with white's checks, can you? Looks like a perpetual to me. But okay. King c1. Oh, I see. But still, is that, is that really winning? I think we should look for some easier path, right? No, no perpetual. No perpetual. Maybe not, but okay. Uh, let's be practical. So, back again. Pawn takes. If king f4, we were saying king d4, bishop takes f5. All right. Any other uh, suggestion for, for black? Anyone with a sharp tactical eye? Are we able to play... I mean, my wild guess would be something like bishop c6, because then I would be able to play king c3. Is that working? I think so, no? Because I'm, I'm, I'm giving away the bishop on the c-file so that they don't queen so quickly. Anyone, wake me up if I'm... Oh, Ryu found bishop d5. Yeah, yeah, you woke me up, right? White will win this game. <laughs> yeah, white will queen before black. So... White wins, yeah. How, how do how do we do that? Maybe there is no way to win here. But it's fine, because we have the same topic, no? The, the bishop will always chase the, the black bishop. Anyone with a sharp, sharp tactical eye. But you don't win here either, do you? Yeah, this seems like a draw, says 
and it says so maybe we got it wrong we got it wrong here after king uh, f4 but i'm pretty sure black wins here I, I simply don't remember how how does this work i think you move the bishop first do you do that yeah yeah of course okay i should probably be quiet and no i don't plug in i don't want to plug in the engine i know the move without an engine i can find it yeah bravo crash 61. all right uh, crash 61 you will have the black pieces here please show everybody what you found exactly so that's what we speak about here working on two fronts so we are going to take that pawn so let's say i take right we shouldn't invade with the king of course we already saw this so you're right you take the pawn i now must protect against this threat i'll have to go back and uh, here i think it shouldn't be that difficult because you already have the past pawn you already have the second front to work on we have this already something can happen here and at the same time you can start pushing the exactly you can start pushing the past pawn so no matter what happens here this is going to be very very difficult for white please notice that as soon as the pawn all right you run with that pawn yeah why not and then you run with the other pawn white's problem is that as soon as the king approaches well he's inviting the the thief to to their house so to speak the king will enter and yeah uh, they will have huge trouble so Basically, that's uh, what this is about. And we will come back to this in, in the main line. So now back to the main line. Uh, after f5, pawn takes, pawn takes. White's most, oh, sorry. White's most critical move here is, uh, I think, the move f4, so that we don't let them have any chance of playing king d4. So f4. Now it's uh, your turn, guys. Uh, here I have a little mission for you. I have a little mission, and we will see who is the most clever one here. So. I'll quiz you on this one. And it's not as simple as you might think, okay? It's not as simple as you might think. You have to be extremely clever to find uh, the way in which you will um, win this game, okay? I'll quiz you for the whole, uh, for the whole variation. All right, uh, here we go, two minutes. Take your time, take your time. It's not so simple. But I can give you a hint. If, you, if you're able to create a passed pawn on the h-file, you'll win the game. If you don't create that passed pawn, and if you let me have a passed pawn on the f-file, you probably won't win the game. So, uh, information for Aditea, Guinea Pig, Titan Chess, and Robo, I will play bishop c2 there, bishop c2, targeting your pawn on f5. Megatron's Rex, I'll play bishop c2 there, okay? And out, smiling floor, the same information for you. Bishop c2 coming up. Chess Ryo, Bishop c2 coming up. I don't think you can win that position. JM Chess, bad news for you. Bishop c2 is coming up. All right, and we have some other uh, suggestions here. You can play like that. Uh, Crash, HDI Chess, awesome Owen. Uh, but okay, I'll... I'll pass. I'll play bishop d3. Eric and Medina Tiger, I will play bishop d3. I'll play bishop d3 and I claim that you won't be able to win this game. So nobody nobody got even close on this one. Uh, bad news, Hong Pao. You will actually lose the game if you play like that. Believe it or not, Hong Pao and Kwoki, you will lose if you play like that. You will create two pass pawns. But uh, I will also have two pass pawns and I will win. Yeah, this is a very... Okay, Pikachu, you're the winner. Well, so so you're actually lost there, but you got very very close. You got very close. So Pikachu is the is the you could say the winner. Only the last move has to be corrected, but else uh, you found it. You found what nobody else found here. Uh, all right. So this was a very difficult task. Let's listen to Pikachu. Please go ahead, Pikachu, and remember that uh, your last move is wrong. Okay. So, bishop e8, targeting the pawn on h5. I have to play bishop d1. And that's the key move, bishop f7. Why does the bishop have to move to f7? Perhaps something we take on c4? No, not at all. It's not about that. The thing is that if we play g6, I will play bishop c2. And black cannot improve here. The king cannot move because the white king will enter. 
if you take, I'll take, and this is not the same thing as we saw previously, because also I have my passport here, right? So uh, not a good idea to play G6. Yeah, please continue, Pikachu. All right, so I have to keep on protecting this pawn, right? And here comes the key move. Yeah, some people are saying here G6, but again, I'll play Bishop D3 and you won't be able to progress. So you have to play like Pikachu says, Bishop G8. Very, very subtle way of playing. Now I, I, I have to wait. And only then, only then, at this point, for example, only then you should play, uh, create the pass pawn. Yeah, maybe we should uh, we should close the chat because it's uh, it's a bit uh, boring to see all those conversations. Uh huh. So G six. Everybody understood what happened. Uh, Pikachu located the bishop on H seven, so that now G takes H five is a threat. As you can see, White has no real way of defending anymore. They can go back if they like. And here you have to adjust your variation. No. There is one move which is suicidal here, and there is one move which is winning. So try not to play the suicidal move. All right. Uh, please I go ahead, uh, Pikachu. Moves. Sorry? I only see three moves. Three G5 moves, all right. G8. Right. So don't play G5. I mean, that's what I wanted to tell you from the very beginning that somebody was saying g5 at move uh, i don't know if it if it was even yeah it was something like how, how did you somebody was saying g5 uh, here i think uh, or maybe it was one move later yeah something like here that g5 so this is losing for for black because white will take play h6 they'll bring in the bishop and it's funny in this situation the white passers are stronger than the black passers Somehow the white king can control these two pawns. While if you play something like f4, I'll play king f3, and I have ideas like bishop d5 and bishop e4. It's funny, but black is lost here. So you can never play g5, not even at the very end, like, like we were discussing here. So, um, right. Yeah, I, I, I got tired of this. So it's, a, it's private chat now. Yeah. So let's see again. If you play here bishop c2, bishop e2, we continue with this plan. We should put our bishop on h7. We get to this position. And after white's move, bishop c2 or bishop e2, whatever, we play g6. But we cannot play g5. It's, it's then the same story. I think even if you play like this, I think even then you end up losing, right? Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think white is winning here. Because white is able to cope with the past pawn. And uh, yeah, you can see for yourself. White is able to, to cope with these pawns. And black cannot. I mean, black is able to. Black is not able to cope with the white pawns. I mean, yeah, the main reason why we maneuver the bishop to h7 is that we need to protect the pawn on f5 uh, once we want to go g takes h5. So the only available angle for the bishop is on h7. If you push g6 at any other moment, white will play bishop d3, and you cannot progress. Um, I hope everybody uh, understands what I'm saying. Uh, not a typical idea, right? Not a typical idea to shuffle your bishop to h7 and then play g6. But actually, it's the only way in which you can win this endgame. So, uh, yeah, we can maybe just finish off this endgame, just to see very quickly. Oh, sorry, that's not a good idea. Uh, mouse slip. So, basically, this is what we're saying. Don't play g5. This is suicide. Then white will play h6, and white will probably win. They will look for some kind of bishop's uh, exchange in some way, or, or trying to enter with a king. Don't do that, of course. So, uh, yeah, I can open up the chat for the last minute. Yeah. So, bishop takes, and here we just slowly uh, start working on the both... Uh, on both uh, um, fronts, right? I, I'm losing the control of this topic. I don't think that that's the best way. That's what I mean. You go for that. Uh, we look a little here and we look a little there. So white probably has to go back with the bishop to protect the pawn. All right. And what, what would then black play? Yeah, this cannot be too difficult, no? Yeah, of course. Bishop f5, 
bishop f7, I mean, uh, you, you don't play h5 because it, I'll take and I'll go back with the bishop. That's big mistake, right? Don't do that. Keep that pawn, please. Keep that pawn. So bishop f7, some patience in the end game. And um, I don't think white can hold this because, again, we have these two th uh, fronts to work on. White won't be able to cope with both uh, uh, fronts. Okay, this one was actually available again. So there's bishop d1. Yeah, even some kind of angle with bishop d1 uh, for black. Right. So I'm, I'm pretty convinced this is not uh, defendable with, with white. It's simply too much for them to, to handle. The h-pawn will uh, seal white's fate here in this endgame. All right. So that's it. Everybody understood? Create a new front on the king side. Remember this funny little idea of bringing the bishop to h7 and push g6. All right. Uh, I'll bring up the next uh, example. I wanted to show you something from this tournament in Latvia, the tournament which has just uh, finished, the FIDE Grand Swiss. There were a wealth of interesting games and I picked uh, the following game played by Spanish Grandmaster David Anton with the white pieces against uh, young Danish Grandmaster Bjarre with the black pieces. So let's see if we can bring this up. Let's see. So here we are. When do you think Firusha will go over uh, 2800? Very soon, I think. <laughs> I think Firusha is doing very well. Fantastic tournament. Uh, really impressive tournament. Um, and it was impressive how he was able to fight back, right? He lost to, Vach to, to Vachier. To whom did he lose in that game? No, to Caruana he lost in that. Uh, yeah, in that, uh, Rilo, that R Berlin. Was that Berlin? I don't remember completely. Aha. But then he, he fought back. So that's uh, what a really strong player is able to. You face some setback and you come back next day. So that was, or almost next day. So that was very impressive. Yeah, fantastic games by, by Ferruso. Anyway, so this endgame, you can see where it comes from. This is some kind of Karlsbad endgame. We can see that from the structure. You can see that uh, white, uh, perhaps they pushed B5, B6, uh, before B5, minority attack, and we ended up like this. So. Uh, horrible endgame, missile sets uh, crash 61, miserable endgame for black, uh, but still it's interesting to see how white was able to um, to take home this endgame. And also notice here our move from Nayers, the first example, h4, h5. Here it was used again. You can see for yourself, here it's extremely important. If h5 was not on the board, black would be very happy to play g6 or perhaps even g5. But now this plan has been hampered for forever. All right, I'll ask you for the next few moves from White here, from David Anton. All right, I'll ask you for just the first, uh, let's say the first two moves. Or should I ask you for more moves? Yeah, I'll ask you for more moves to make it more fun. So, four moves. Let's see if you can find those four moves, okay? Why to play and improve their position. You're on the right track, yeah, JM Chess, uh, I, HDI Chess, and Medina Tiger. But if you play it in that way, I think I get some counterplay. Uh, is that so? Could I play something like Rook C2, maybe? Let's see. Oh, everybody wants to play like that. I see. <laughs> Interesting. Maybe you have a point. We will have to call David Anton and ask why didn't he play that straight away. All right, let's try to, th to think here. Nobody wants to play like the Grandmaster. Well, what might be the reason? He played that later, no? Just for your information, he played that move later. Um, he played that a little later. What might be the reason? Don't you think I could play f4, maybe? Is that too ambitious? And then play rook c4? Maybe? Okay, Titan chess. Congratulations, you played exactly like Anton. Aha, little Grandmaster and Salham Aditya. You can maybe play that check later, no? I'll probably play Rook C6. I think you should keep the Rooks on. 
Okay, th MM Thinker, you were very close. He played that move later. All right, but you definitely caught the right uh, spirit here. Awesome Owen, you were also very close. Uh, he played that a little later. First, he improved another piece in this position. So, Titan Chess, Crush 61 and Mega Source Rex, you got it right. Let's listen to Crush 61. All right, uh, Crush 61, you're on. What do you play with White? All right, bring, let's bring in the King. This makes a lot of sense. It, this cannot be wrong. Please notice that the Black Knight is badly placed. There is no way for it to join the center quickly, like come to e6 or something like that. It's a far away from, from home. Uh, this wouldn't work, as you can see. White could then play. Well, I, well maybe it does work. Well, what do you, th what do you say, uh, Crash 61? What would you play now? Maybe this doesn't make sense, no, because I cannot uh, I cannot play king d6 because I dropped that pawn. And if I play king f6, I, I would perhaps drop, drop this pawn. Yeah, probably you'll play g4 and... Uh, right. Um, what happened? I'm not able to to move. Um, oh, you played bishop e2. I see, I see. Right, but then I'll play king f6, don't you think? And I'll play knight e6. That was my whole plan. So some people are saying here g4. I think that's the correct move. Right, so probably this is a, a troublesome for, for black. Please notice here that if they take, we can perhaps take with the bishop, or you can give check first. Okay, but then I play rook c6. I'm not convinced that you should go for the minor piece endgame, or what do you think? Ah, okay, so you stay in that endgame. Okay, possibly, but let me tell you, this is much better for black than, in, than the game. Black has more chances of drawing here than in the game. Um, I don't know if I can play like this and I can play rook b6. Is that possible? Yeah, the f5. Well, you know, Titan says that f5 pawn was a weak, big weakness. Why I trade it off? Actually, he did that later on in the game. So it's uh, it's a good plan, but we can probably improve it. Let's see again. So we said here, um, what was our move? King g3, and I was going back with the knight. So king f4, knight d8. And uh, we had different ideas, but I think g4 is fine. I think this is this is perfectly fine. But I'm not convinced about that check. Um, I think maybe we can just take on g4 and later on play like in the game. Okay, we'll come back to this. We'll come back to this uh, later on. So let's uh, continue with the right variation here. Okay, uh, king g3, black play knight c4. Who was talking? Uh, who has the pawn? Crush. Okay, crush. Great work. King f4. Black played at this point rook f7. We reroute the bishop. I play here knight d6, I guess. Or In the game, they played first rook c7. Yeah, rook c7 first. Aha. Uh -huh. And bishop d3. So I hope the first part of the plan is clear to, to everyone. We have this check in the pocket, rook b6. We don't have to carry it out right now. First, we're trying to tie the black pieces to the defense of this pawn. All right, so far, so good. Rook b6. Aha, now I have troubles coming up. I cannot play rook c6 here. Then I drop the pawn on a6, exactly. After take, and I guess you just take there. So black had to play in the game, rook f7. So how do you progress now? Well, I think I'll, I'll quiz this one, okay? To make it more entertaining. So I'll quiz this one for everybody. Let's see if you can find the best plan for for white here. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll quiz the, the whole variation and we'll see if you can find it. Else, um, no problem. So you have to use uh, two useful moves, okay, uh, on the road. I think it's a bit similar to the Rooken game we saw last time by Pia Kramling, where she um, created the pass pawn in the center. Okay, so let's see. Uh, I get the point, uh, JM Chess and Robo. That's what they played in the game. But before doing that, they included a useful move. Also, Mobin and HDI Chess. The same comment goes for you and for Chess Ryu and for Eric. Before you do that, you can include a useful move. Okay. So what useful move is there in the position? Let's think about that. 
Okay, Medina Tiger, tactical magician. That's uh, excellent what you're saying. Mega Charles Rex. So, uh, yeah. Good work by everybody. You're very close on this one. Um, you have to combine the ideas of some people here with the ideas of other people. And then you will uh, produce the solution played in the game. All right. So, Titan Chess, you were closest. But I want to ask you something, Titan Chess. Where do you want to have Black's Rook when you push uh, G4? What do you think favors White? Where would they like the Black Rook to be? Having answered that, you'll see the, the right way to go. Okay. Um, so those of you who played a5 on move one, that's perfectly fine. Uh, again, I cannot, uh, I cannot create like multiple correct choices. I can only tell Chessable that one solution is, is correct. By the way, fantastic platform Chessable. Please check their latest uh, courses and so on. A very nice platform for training. All right, so time's out. Um, who got closest here? Uh, Titan, tight, Titan Chess, Alg19 and Charles Hua. Okay, Alg19. Let's see if we can use your idea, but on move three, you have to improve your move order, okay? So please go ahead, uh, Alg. All right, F3, white is about to play G4. It's true that in this way, they are liberating black from their weakness, but at the same time, this will help white to create a pass point in the center. Black played rook F8, I think. Now we fix the pawns on the right color. This is never in vain, because there might even be pawn end games, right? There might be some pawn end game coming up when it's very useful, of course, for us to be able to prevent B5. We can always take on passant All right. I'll just uh, sit and wait. And here you have to improve uh, Alg at this point, because you could play G4, which would be very similar to the game. But we could claim that the Black Rook is well placed on F7. So such small details, strong grandmasters like uh, David Anton, they do this very quickly. Aha, that's right, the Titan Chess, you got it. That's what he played in the game. So he wants to get to that position, but he wants to have the Black Rook placed uh, somewhere else than F7. So you're right, L008 and Titan Chess, Mega Charles Rex, that's right, we play G3. Okay, everybody understands they cannot move the Rook in that way because then they're blundering this pawn, right? So they have to stick uh, to the F file. And now we can push G5, so G4, sorry. That's how we play in the game. So I understand it looks paradoxical to give Black a chance to get rid of that pawn. But at the same time, as you can see now, we have a funny situation. If you look carefully, you can see that one pawn stops two on... I'm trying to click the two on this side. And we have the same situation on that side. So if material is equal, that means that white should have a few extra pawns somewhere else on the board, right? And that's exactly what happens in the center. So safe to say white will create... Yeah, black, exactly across 61. White is basically two points up in the center. So that's what happened here in this game. Now everybody understands also why it was good to include this move, just uh, uh, discard any, reject any ideas with B5. So the rest is actually surprisingly simple for white. Uh, no way black can survive here. Anyone, what would you play with white here in this dream endgame? What would you play? Well, some people play this move at move one. Quiz, really? Okay, I'll quiz, but only, I think, 10 seconds on this one. It, it, there is nothing else to do, right? Yeah, right. The Hong Kong Mega Charles Rex, Medina Tiger, Charles Mayo, L008, Eric, Crush, JM Chess, HTI Chess, Adi Chess, Aditya, Guinea Pig, Awesome Owen, RZ 2018, Quacky. Right. Bishop takes A6. That's not necessary, right? Don't do this, and, unless you really love gambling. Uh, just stick to the plan here. Right, uh, okay, let's listen to Medina Tiger. You're on Medina Tiger, how do you continue here? Of course, the natural move in this position, if black takes, yeah, uh, obviously we'll keep those pawns together and yeah, this will be just nightmare for black. It's already nightmare. They played in the game King C7, what would you play now, Medina Tiger? 
Right. So that's how the game went. And there are, I guess, a million ways you can uh, win this game. But uh, he played in, in, in nice fashion here. Yeah, you're right, Titan Chess. He played rook g6. It was very difficult for black to, to survive here. In this position, we have diff different winning plans. Um, one simple plan is just to push this pawn, and you can even create a new weakness there. In the game, they played rook g8. And uh, if we don't want them, want them to play knight e7, what should we play? Anyone? Yeah, you can play bishop e5. Like I'm saying, everything should win here. Even this, I guess, might be winning. But uh, okay, maybe black can create some kind of barrier. Or maybe not. Yeah, I don't know. Probably this is also winning. You move the bishop and you push the pawns, but maybe some counterplay on that side. Yeah, you can even play ac Yeah, many ways you can play. Yeah, this is also interesting. You're right, uh, tactical magician. You're really a magician, no? You can play like that, and then you can push the pawn, and probably the deep pawn will win the game for you. So basically everything is possible in this position. Um, in the game, he played this nice move, rook e6, so that black cannot get closer with the knight. Yeah, the game already lost its interest. They played rook d8. Black could basically resign at this point. But okay, they fought on to the bitter end. And here, finally, black resigned. So summing up, what we have seen here is that we have already several fronts. We're attacking this pawn. There is that pawn. There is this pawn. First step in our plan, bring in the king. That's a good place for the king. Thanks to this structure, black is not able to push g5. And also the knight couldn't get closer to the white king in any way. And later on, uh, why did black play f5? I have no idea. I, I mean, that's probably happened in the opening. Yeah, they are probably regretting that now. Then this nice rerouting plan with the bishop. And later on, we have this key plan of f3 and g4. Very similar to what Kramling did, right, in, in her game. She, she brought the king to d3 and then she played e4 at some point. It's the same kind of structure, same kind of of thinking. But I like these little small details. Now a5, fixing the pawn one step only so that the black rook will be on f8 where it will be worse placed than on f7 and then we're ready to push e4. Anyway, I had a, an idea at black's other possibilities and I think there were some better way of playing with black. Um, there was some other way of playing. Maybe... What was the other idea? Knight c4? No, that was b5? Something like this I looked at also. Maybe that was better. Or maybe not. No, sorry. I, I guess we're queening here, right? Yeah, that's not possible. Sorry. Anyway, tough endgame for black. They could have defended better, perhaps. But uh, it certainly won't be easy. So please try to see these patterns. Opening up a new, new front. Very useful way of, uh, of thinking in the endgame. Um, yeah, I think maybe what my idea was to play here 96. Yeah, so that if g4, rook f7. Yeah, this looks slightly better than the game. Uh -huh. For example, a5 is not in. So this is probably better than the game. But still, it doesn't change the picture. All right. Uh, maybe I should bring up a last example, right? Let's bring up a last example. So let's see. Which example should we look at? Um, I thought maybe we could have a look at one of Nakamura's uh, endgames, if you don't mind. He had a very nice endgame in the US Championship some nine years ago. Maybe you're familiar with this endgame, maybe you aren't. Um, still, I think it's very instructive, so let's have a quick look at this endgame. With white pieces Nakamura and playing black Kaidanov. We have some kind of, uh, yeah, which opening would this be? Actually, I'm not convinced uh, about which opening. Is this some kind of Slav or whatever with the bishop? Sad bishop, white has a better structure. You can see a weakness on a5. White is happy to have the bishop pair. Bishop e1, we always have it, but black will always play king b6. Um, so safe to say white is, is better here. Better pawn structure, bishop pair, passive black bishop. However, black is solid, and you can see that this knight is doing a great job. Aha. So let's see if you can come up with Nakamura's plan here. I'll quiz you for the first, let's say, three moves in this game. Okay. Let's see the first three moves in this game. All right. How to proceed with white here? On the topic of opening a new front, right? 
That's right, HDHS. You found it very quickly. Eric F0 2008, great work. L008, Hong Pao, Mega Chot, Swex. Great work. Maybe you're familiar with this uh, endgame or simply you're familiar with the pattern that we are uh, investigating here. Guinea Pig, you also found it. That's Indeed great. Too. Yeah, we'll wait for everybody to, to look at. Tactical Magician, nice work. Chess Ryu, you got it also. Awesome Owen. Aha. Uh -huh. So that's the first, first part of uh, Nakamura's plan. Hwoki, Subham, and so on. Um, that's great. Yeah, Pikachu, you got it also. Robo. Aha. Uh -huh. Great work. RZ 2018, Crush, Alg. Yeah, it seems you have really uh, picked up this idea or you knew it from the past or whatever. And okay, there, are, there is not so much else to do here probably in this position. So great, time is running out. Um, let's uh, listen to HDI Chess, who was the first person to find Nakamura's uh, plan here in the game. All right, uh, HDI Chess, you're on. Right, King G2, uh, Black played in the game, Bishop D7, I think. We just can come closer with the King. There is nothing to do in the center or on the Queen side, really, but G4 is a very good move. Yeah, you're right, uh, Crash 61. Ah, interesting how chess is, some cases, one side has Bishop power, better structure and space, and the only compensation is a block turn. Yeah, uh, but I mean, we, we shouldn't paint it black, everything, right? This knight is very strong. It's uh, Black's uh, main defensive hope here, this knight. But okay, the knight alone will not uh, be enough for Black to, to save themselves. So, okay, you're completely right, g4. Please notice that when Nakamura plays g4 here, he still doesn't know exactly what will happen. He only knows, that he just knows that he's on the right track, that something will happen on the, on the king side. Something will happen here. He doesn't know exactly what, but he'll see that later. Just like when Nayer played h4, h5, h6, uh, he didn't know exactly what would happen, but we play it like for general reasons. See what's going to happen next. All right, let's continue. Black took, king takes g4, bishop d7. Uh, all right, I'll just quiz you on the next move here with white. 30 seconds. What should white play here? Yeah, you're right, uh, JM Chess. Just Ryu and Sabham. That's what Nakamura played also. Some people play h5. Is that a tactical oversight or maybe you're tired from this lesson? Don't worry, next time we will look at something else. No more endgames <laughs> until next year probably. Yeah, next time we'll do some middle game stuff instead, I think. So Mega Charles Rex, Google Chess and HDI Chess. If you play h5, I'm curious to find out what you had in mind because this pawn is falling off, right? So don't do this, right? It's the, the way to suicide here. Don't do it. Uh, also, I mean, from general reasons, we should try to keep the number of pawns on the board. Try not to swap pawns when you're attacking. All right, uh, JM Chess, uh, what do you say? What do you play with white here? Of course, King G5. The king is an attacking piece in the end game. You can already start considering ideas like bringing the king a little closer. And also, we don't lose anything by playing it, right? It's no risk playing king g5. Um, yeah, there was no any time I panicked. Aha, uh -huh, right. So black is in trouble here. Now Kaidanov notices that uh, probably he shouldn't lose time with the bishop anymore because he needs the rook here on some occasions. So he played here king b7, trying to perform waiting moves with the king instead, right? So how to uh, proceed with white? You can play here in different ways. Um, but I like the way he played in the game. He played first the move bishop e4. As you can see, we are also considering, maybe you remember that old Russian saying, one advantage of the bishop pair is that you can give away one of them in order to obtain some other advantage. So we might be considering to take on d5 actually. And after that, we would be able to bring in the king. And we already have a weakness to work on, right? So that's good to have in store, this idea of bishop um, takes d5. 
Yeah, but you're right, Titan Chess. That's obviously Color Bishops, but uh, well, you'll see how this game ends and you'll you'll understand me. So in the game, they play here the move Rook H8. And at this point, I think there are two uh, two interesting ways to play with with the white pieces. But uh, yeah, we shouldn't take on uh, A5. I'll quiz you on this one. Let's do a little tactic also. Black to play and win. All right. Let's see who is the smartest one here. Yeah, rook takes a five is a blunder. You're right. Okay, HDI chess, cross 61, chess Ryo, L008, Pikachu. You got it, Medina Tiger, Robo, Titan chess. Aha, cheap tactics. That's what uh, you should be careful about when you have a superior endgame like this. But no way Nakamura will fall into this trap, of course. Aha, so a lot of people found it. Yeah, and uh, that's something that you have to avoid, like I was saying. When you have a, a good position in the end game or at any, any stage of the game, don't get too confident. <laughs> Always be a little careful about the cheap tactics. All right, um, let's uh, ask uh, Robo. What do you say, Robo? What do you play here with the black pieces? What about this cheap tactic? Aha, very nice. The rooks are staring at each other from afar. And white loses because, yeah, P this uh, fork, and if I take, I drop the rook in the end, right? So this would be total nightmare for black. Of course, Nakamura was not even close to falling into this trap. Having seen that uh, rook h5 is a resource for black, it's not difficult to find white's best move, right? Of course, that's how we should play the endgame. You're right, Titan chess. Aha. That's right, bishop f3. That's how we play the end game. We limit slowly our opponent's active choices. Black played at this moment rook a8 because actually now the pawn is hanging, so they have to protect it, and there is no other real way to protect it. Yeah, you have to go back because king a6 would just run into bishop e2, right? Again, don't forget we have different fronts to work on. It's not only about this rank. Oh, you're moving the pieces now, thanks. But uh, I think I'll move them myself, okay? Uh, thanks anyway. So. Bishop f3, control, no rush here. Let's restrict black. That there was the move rook a8. And uh, yeah, something interesting happened here. Because what Nakamura did now is very human. He just shuffled around a little the pieces to see what, what would happen. So there are different ways in you can, which you can proceed here. But first, he checked if he was helped by bringing the bishop to, to this diagonal. But later on, he actually said that, no, I don't really need that. Um, maybe he checked some check here and king comes there and how to progress. I better uh, go back, then he said. Then he found the, the winning plan here. Bishop f2, bishop d7. And here you have two different ways of winning this endgame. You can either play like Nakamura did in the game, or you can play in a more flashy way. But I like the way in, in which he played. So. I'll quiz you on this one. This will be one of the last quizzes today. Let's see if you can find uh, the best way to, to proceed here with uh, white pieces, okay? I think that's about it. Yeah, one minute should be enough at this point. Yeah, that's also interesting. Tactical Magician and JM Chess. You can probably do it, but... Uh, Remember that I can play bishop e6 maybe later. Maybe. Well, I'm not completely convinced, though. So, Mega Charles Rex, you got it, Hong Pao, that's right. That's the right plan, in my opinion. And that's what he played in the game. Aug, you got it as well. Oh, interesting, rook h1. But uh, is white favored by trading rooks? I'm not. Convinced about that, if you say so. But uh, I certainly would like to keep the rooks in this in this position. I think it favors white. He has a more active rook. So Kwaki, you got it also. A lot of people want to trade. All right, uh, let's uh, listen to. Sorry. Why so why not? Uh, bishop takes d five at the end, like f five. Bishop takes d five. Right. Uh, let's go. Let's go step by step. So, some people are saying uh, rook h1, which is possible, not to play h5. I'm just saying that I'm not convinced that we should swap the rooks. Uh, I'm not completely sure that 
I mean, black can sometimes protect the bishop, the pawn can protect the pawn, the bishop protects the pawn and so on. I think you should keep the rooks on. Uh, all right, so your question is, why don't we take on d5 straight away? I think that's also completely possible. And play king f6, right? If you were saying this, I have one question for you. Could I play something like that? Or like active defense? Or, or it's not working? Well, probably not, right? You have some tactics coming up here. Something like, like this. Right. Probably my, my plan is failing, no? You have e6 coming up here. So this is not a good idea. Okay. Uh, I just wanted to defend in active way. So I'll play bishop e6 then. So all of you who are saying this bishop takes d5, um, what, what, what would you like to play now? Um, like tactical magician. Uh, I can give you the pawn tactical magician. So you can play with, with white. What was your idea here? The pawn is pinned, so I can take the bishop. But then I'll play rook h5, don't you think? I feel like I'm defending here right now. But okay, maybe I'm wrong. Sorry, the pawn is pinned, so I can't take the bishop. Are you speaking about the other variation? Or, or what? King is 7 to go bishop c5? Interesting. I guess I'll just stick to my plan. I do think I have some counterplay here. And also you haven't created the pass pawn. Okay, let's see here. After bishop d3, there is rook e4. Oh, so you're speaking about my variation again. This variation. But you cannot play rook e4. I play e6 and I... Oh, I understand. Interesting. Yeah, good point. Pins and, uh, and so on. That's right. So maybe this is possible for black. Funny, funny variation. Rook e1. Oh, rook e1. That's like a heartbreaker. Maybe I put the king in the right... No, I had to put the king there. Yeah, white wins. Almost worked. <laughs> right. Almost worked. Interesting variation, though. Very interesting. Uh -huh. So I guess black has to play solid here. Uh, bishop e6. But I get the impression that white is winning somehow. I thought somebody would say f5 here. Nobody said f5. But that looks thematic, no? If you take like that, maybe we can <clears throat> create a pass pawn on, on this side. Um, although it's not clear, no? No, it's not clear because... I could put my rook there. Yeah, funny, funny endgame, funny endgame. Maybe now you should work on the other front instead. You should stop. But okay, I'll, I also have my past one. So maybe we shouldn't get too confused here. Who's the one trying to win? Yeah, good question. So once you have the game in a complete control like this, very careful about the moment where you uh, try to finish your opponent off. So who said, uh, yeah, Mega Charles Rex, you were showing, right? Uh, you can show show us the variation. Okay. Exactly. I think this is much cleaner because now we uh, we give up the pawn, we create our pass pawn, but we don't swap our um, bishop pair. We keep the bishops a little longer. So if I take... This is not so difficult to understand. Yeah, h5 and h6 and so on. This must be very, very difficult for black to, to handle. I mean... Don't forget that we can later on go back and fight on this side again, right? So if they move over the rook, uh, who is going to stop the h pawn? That's, that's going to be very difficult for black. So in the game, Kaidanov didn't take on, on f5. But I quizzed you on this because I thought it was thematic. So in, in the game, um, after f5, he played instead rook g8. So anyway, what do you think Nakamura played now? Exercise. Okay, okay. <laughs> right. I'll just quiz you for one move, okay? I'll just quiz you for one move. Interesting, Titan Chess, your variation. We can look at, look at that also. Yeah, I think uh, we're very close to... But okay, don't do that, right? Don't take because I take on F5. So, Crush, uh, Guinea Pig, Hong Pao, Adi Chess, Chazwayu, Eric, L008. You played what Nakamura played, and I'm pretty sure that's the best choice also. Uh, Sometimes they say that when you have the two bishops, you should open up the game, but actually here it's the opposite thing. Uh, you're right. So congratulations to all of you who said the move f6. That's what he played in the game. The idea is clear. We're fixing a weakness on f7, and that's not an easy pawn to protect, right? And yeah, I mean, also queen scenarios and so on. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, I'll reopen the I'll reopen the chat when we're done. Okay, uh, we're not in a hurry. If you take on d five, I'll take on f five just for the record. No, and if you play king f six, I'll take. You can take here, and I'll look for some counterplay. I don't know, rook. Uh, can I play rook g two? Maybe. I have in the past one also. I don't know. Or what do you think? Uh, is white winning here? Probably white is winning. You know. Yeah, bishop c5, I think you're saying, Titan chess. Aha. I was relying on rook e2, but I guess you can just give check and then run with the h-pawn, right? Well, if you're saying that you're winning, I, I believe you. No, I believe you. But okay, maybe I can still fight on. Some distant hope of giving away, give away something? Rook h2, maybe? Well, I don't know. Or, or, or you tell me. I don't uh, see it clearly. Well, I could perhaps even take there. And... Am I alive? Or you have some pretty tactic here? Let me know if you have some pretty tactic, but uh, I can't see it. Yeah, nothing going on, right? But it's not working, Titan says. I also looked at that, but it's not working. It's... I win. <laughs> Black win. Some, someone... Yeah, right. So, I think if we calm down a little, we can win this with white. Definitely. But maybe it's not as easy as what he played in the game. Maybe we can play some move like rook f1 to have more control and so on. But uh, yeah, still it's a little tricky, no? And I also have another pass pawn here, so who knows? I think it's not the cleanest path to victory. I like much more what he played in the game. So you can see, you can learn from these strong players like Nakamura. One important uh, way of thinking is to restrict opponent's activity. So by playing f6, he's basically ruling out any counterplay for black. So I think it's the right way to go. Maybe Stockfish would say something else. I don't know. But uh, yeah, for humans, this way of playing makes a lot of sense. All right. Black played rook h8. And now white would like to proceed on the... They would like to enter with the king, but that's not possible, right? So how do you think we should progress at this point? Quiz for you. Okay, Titan Chess, you found something for for White, Rook, Bishop F8. I see. Probably right. White is winning now. But remember that we are moving the pieces and they had to uh, figure this out uh, in their mind, right? They couldn't move the pieces. So it's, it makes sense to look for the most practical path. All right. HDI Chess, Pikachu, Titan Chess, Crush, JM Chess, L008. That's how this whole thing works, right? Working on two fronts or... Uh, two weaknesses or whatever you call it, you try to exhaust your opponent's defenses. And in this case, we have to deflect the black rook from the H file. Uh, all right. Let's listen to L008. What do you play here? That's right. Black cannot protect with the king, of course. They run into some tactic. They have to play rook A8. And your next move is not difficult. Aha, that's right. This king will be a beast when it reaches g7. It will be attacking the pawn and also white could consider probably to play h5. I mean, we had such a position earlier on, but not with the king on g7. <laughs> so that makes a big difference. Yeah, black cannot even stop king g7, king f7, king... I mean, I can play bishop e8, but okay, we'll, we'll see, we'll see. In the game, black played here knight f4, looking for counterplay. Uh, so that if... Well, there is a cheapo here, right? He would like to play knight d3, I guess. Although at this point, I think everything is winning for white. So I guess also this is winning, right? They cannot take because of bishop g3 and so on. Yeah, basically everything is winning. But Nakamura sticks to this uh, restrictive fashion. First, bishop e3. And after knight h5, you can guess for yourself what white played. Uh, should I quiz you on this? All right. Let's do it. That's right. Robo, HDI Chess, Chess Ryo, Crash, Mega Short Rex, Titan Chess, Hong Pao. That's completely right. Uh, not every opposite color bishop's endgame is a draw. That depends a lot on, yeah, where the pieces are and so on. I mean, even if you. If you move away the rooks from the board, if you remove the rooks, uh, white will be winning here. But it's because they have managed to fix a weakness on f7. Yeah, okay, so uh, 
Little Grandmasters, AM Chess, Hong Pao, Titan Chess, Mega Chaos, Wex, Crush, and so on. You got it. Nice. So this is a good moment to go for the opposite color Bishop's Endgame. Let's listen to JM Chess. All right, JM Chess, you're on. What do you play with white? Okay, we take. That's right. So we bring the king closer. I guess you can also take this pawn, but it seems utterly unnecessary. Uh, although I don't know where I would play with black here. Yeah, who knows? Maybe rook b8, try to attack this pawn. Yeah, white is winning in every variation, but Nakamura went for king g7, which uh, looks uh, nicer, no? Looks nicer to me. King g7, black played bishop e8. So like I was saying, even if you drop the rooks, uh, even if the rooks are gone, uh, white would win effortlessly here, right? Um, I mean, if you play, how can I remove the rooks? Like, let's see here. I'll just do this to, to see what happens if uh, if the rooks are on, off, right? Something like this. So you can see for yourself, even this would be winning very easily for white, right? Just bringing the king to f8. It's not a typical opposite color bishop's ending. Maybe if black had a bishop on g6, they would make a draw, right? But uh, here it's on the right, on the wrong side. So it's, uh, yeah, hopeless angle for the black bishop. Uh, even without this weakness, I, I guess white would win with king f8. And I mean, something like this and just took swung them, right? Something like that. Even if, I mean, if this didn't exist, you would still win somehow by took swing. Correct me if I'm wrong. So hopeless uh, configuration, that bishop had to be on the other side, but of course that was never possible. Uh, yeah, sorry for that messy variation, but I, I, I cannot uh, remove the rooks from the board here at Chessable. So that's the way. All right. So take, take, uh, we're about to finish this. Yeah, okay, I'll, I'll uh, add, open up the chat. All right, so you can chat now because we're about to finish this. Bishop e8, king f8, king b7, king e7, fantastic king by Nakamura. Please notice how this king walked in this game. Truly fascinating walk. King e7, king c7, and bishop d2. Very, very clean game, as you can see. In the very end, black is uh, not able to defend both, uh, uh, how do you say, both fronts. If I play king b6, anyone, what do you think white should play here? This would be the last little quiz for today, right? What would you play with white? Yeah, that's right, L008, uh, crush, titan chess. That's right. Eric, RZ, Pikachu, Tactical Magician, Quacky, Chess, Ryu, and so on. That's completely right. It's a good illustration of how we can exhaust our opponent defending on several flanks at the same time. I think this is very simple, so uh, I'll just cancel the quiz and we'll ask Eric for the solution. Okay, Eric, how do you continue here? The black rook is... I played um, rook takes a5 because it would deflect the rook. From right, bishop. that's that's completely right. And then that's, after rook takes uh -huh. a5, I take the rook with the check, and then after Definitely. I take the bishop, I, I'm winning. Right, you're, you're winning here. Fine. So that's basically the whole idea. Yeah, thanks, Eric. So from the very beginning, please notice this nice plan by Nakamura, uh, g4. He wasn't completely sure what would happen later on, but he knew that there was something. It was a good idea to bring in the king. Ultimately, it's the king which will exhaust Black's defenses in this case. Uh, so please keep this general idea in mind and also keep in mind the idea that we can sometimes give up one of our bishops uh, in order to obtain some other advantage. All right, guys, I think that's it for today. Uh, thanks a lot and see you next time.